God damn it. <laughs> What's going on guys, Big Al's Bike and Auto here coming at you and I want to do something a little bit different for the 1000 subscriber achievement on this channel and that's thanks to you guys. Thank you very much for subscribing. I know some of you are aware that this is not the first Big Al's Bike and Auto. I had a channel before this, it's still on YouTube. Without further ado, what I wanted to do today was show you guys my fleet of cars and the reason for that is because I uploaded all the old videos from the old channel to this new channel in the past few months. I think a lot of my new subscribers have become confused thinking that some of those cars are new purchases when I've had them for years or they're gone, whatever the case may be. So I wanted to clarify and that way there's no more confusion and plus I thought it might be interesting because there's a lot of cars I have you guys haven't even seen at all, at least on this channel. So let's get right into it. Um, this right here is my 2008 Saturn Aura XE, so it's the 2.4 EcoTac. This is one of my first Copart purchases. I bought it for 600 bucks, which isn't bad for a 2008 Aura because this car's retail value is anywhere from high twos to low fours. You can see it's in pretty good condition. Um, this car had a lot of gremlins when I bought it. I sorted out a lot of the issues on the cheap. The most expensive thing I'm done was the fuel pump for 100 bucks. Um, but I had this car working great, and that's why I haven't got rid of it. I actually drove it around for a bit. And now I have an electrical issue with the transmission. There's a bad ground. Simple fix. I'm just not good with car electronics. So I'm waiting for my good friend who's an electrician when he has time to come over here and sort it out. And then I'm going to finally sell it because had I got rid of this car and I had it working perfectly, I would have made a lot of money on it. And I should have got rid of it then. But I'm a car guy before I'm a car flipper. I love cars and always tend to keep them. And that leads us to this car, which I've kept too long. Um, and you guys haven't seen this one yet at all because I didn't see any reason to make a video of it. I've already done two AT&T car videos. But this is another AT&T car from Copart, 2001 Chevy Cavalier. It's 73,000 miles. It's really clean. You can see the paint's in great condition. This one was issue free from the start. I bought this right after I bought the Malibu and Cavalier actually in that video because those both sold so quickly and for so much money. I said, geez, you know, I'm gonna buy everyone I see. And um, so I'm gonna this one for close to a thousand bucks after all the co-part fees, the taxes, the title, shipping, everything. Which, if I had bought this car to keep, would be, you know, not bad at all. You know, 73,000 mile, zero issue car. I've already put a thousand miles in this in the past almost two months. It's been great, great, great car. You know, if I had more room and a need for it, I'd keep it, but I don't. So, sorry my friend, but I gotta go. This right here, a lot of you guys spotted in the Explorer video. And you were correct, it is a Buick Riata, it's a 1989. This was not a Copart purchase, it was a local purchase on Craigslist and I paid a little more than I wanted to pay for it. However, I have a bleeding heart for these particular front wheel drive GM cars, the Riata, the Riviera, the Tornado, anything with the crazy uh, CRT screen that's called the VIC, Visual Information Center. I got this for way less. Pretty much what I paid for the Cavalier that what you typically get a Riata for. However, it does have some issues, cosmetic issues only. You can see that there was some damage to the hood from the hurricane we had back in September when the previous owner still had it. Paint's coming off the front. The car was sitting for a number of years with flat tires. Filled the tires up, threw a battery in it, fired right up, it ran great. So what I did to this car, oil change, coolant flush, Put some fix a flat in the tires, that's pretty much it. It runs and drives great. 216,000 miles, let me tell you something. This guy had the extended warranty from GM, and this car has had pretty much everything replaced. Um, you can even see in the engine bay, water pump, everything. Uh, the whole suspension has been done over at some point. It drives like a brand new Riata. I've driven Riata at 80,000 miles, this one drives better. It runs better. It runs better than my Riviera does with 90,000 miles because it didn't, I mean, it did sit for a bit, but this car has had all those little, the crankshaft, the cam sensors, everything's been replaced in this car. So, a little ugly because of the damage in the front, but I'd rather have something like that where I can just source a hood and touch up the front bumper and mechanically it's perfect than one that looks perfect, like the Riviera, and is gonna need all sorts of tinkering. The 88 Volvo 740 I bought from Copart for 275. 
and this was a one owner car with 290,000 miles. I just hit that. I've had this car for almost two months. It's a five speed manual. Copart Miracle. Didn't need a single thing. Perfect, perfect, perfect car in every way. The only thing I do is put a battery in it. The perfect car. Very happy with that purchase. And if you couldn't see the theme already, I've had a few people ask me, why do you buy these 80s cars? They want to see me buy all the stuff that all these other big Copart YouTubers buy, you know, the new BMWs and all that. I'm a Malaise era car guy. I always have been. All my old subscribers will tell you that. Um, and if you don't know what the Malaise era means, it's cars built from 72 to 95, which most people consider to be some of the worst cars ever built. You know, bad performance, bad construction quality, low horsepower, whatever. Those are the cars I grew up around. Those are the cars that I love. And that's never changed. And now I'm seeing more and more of them end up in junkyards. So I feel obligated to save them because if I don't, they won't be around for me to enjoy in the future. And the nostalgic feeling I get behind the wheel of these cars, I don't get that from anything else. Or it just, I really enjoy them that much. I know it sounds crazy, but these are the cars that I love and that's why I collect them. And that's why I don't stop buying them. Even stuff like this, you know, 97 Ford Explorer with 42,000 original miles. Um, I saw that, I said, shit, I gotta save this thing. Someone's gonna just buy it and pull the motor out, but where are you gonna find a 42,000 mile Explorer from this era, you know, uh, second gen, you're not. And now we have what? I think this had 42,643 when it came in. I've driven it, what, 20 miles? Um, what? Mercedes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's what happens when you have so many cars. So this is the 87 300E that I bought from Copart a long time ago. I bought this back in January. Um, 250 bucks. What makes this 300E special in particular is that it's a gray market car. What that means is that it was imported after the fact. It was meant for European roads, but ended up in the US. It's got Euro bumpers, it's got the no, no wipers in the front. It does have US headlights. I think someone changed them when it came overseas. Um, you, and the interior is a uh, very rare cloth interior with heated seats, heated cloth seats. Let me tell you something, heated seats in a W124 are almost non-existent. Never mind cloth heated seats. And all the guys at Pelican Parts are telling me this car is essentially like a one of one when you narrow it down to how many are left. It has a European engine and transmission as well. It doesn't have the US one that is over-regulated with emissions, so very desirable car. The Daily Driver. Um, I did a video on this recently. You guys can go find it on my channel. 2004 Escalade. I bought it with 142,000 miles. Now it's got 157. I do a lot of driving, and that's just this one car I put like 14,000 miles on since January. Um, Always been a big full-size GM truck guy. All my subscribers from the past can attest to that. I've had dozens of Escalades and Suburbans and Tahos and Yukons and you name it. Um, they've always been my daily driver of choice. Oh. This is my 84 Pontiac Fiero. I had this car for almost 10 years. It is a fully restored Fiero, as crazy as that may sound. The original owner bought it for his kids to use through college. And when the engine, the Iron Duke, inevitably blew up, the friend of the owner, a friend of the owner, I should say, bought it in the early 2000s, restored the car completely, and took it to a bunch of car shows, which especially, now Fieros are starting to become a little more collectible, but back then it was like absurd to see a Fiero at a car show. But he did a full restoration on it, took it to some shows, and he willed it to the original owner. Sure enough, he passed away. In the mid 2000s, the original owner took it back through the will and he drove it for a few years and he got too old to drive it, couldn't get in and out of it, and I bought it off the original owner. And I bought it for 2,700 bucks with a full restoration. It has Ferrari red paint, has a custom Mr. Mike seats, and the whole interior was redone. The entire suspension was real done. We're talking for like, what, 10 minutes now? What time are we at? 12? Not bad. The entire suspension was redone, all the steering components, the Muncie force was rebuilt. It has a Iron Duke crate motor from GM, which I know I wish it was a 3800 in there, uh, you know, a supercharged 3800 swap, but it's not. Uh, crate motor, um, 2.5 four cylinder Iron Duke from GM. This whole restoration has maybe 10,000 miles on it. I have all the paperwork for everything. 
And this car I've had for, again, almost 10 years, it's given me zero issues. It's probably the closest example to a turnkey Fiero you'll ever find. Um, and it's locked. And it drives unbelievably well. Better than a Fiero ever drove, put it that way, because they put the best of best in this car for parts when it was restored. They did all soundproofing the doors. I mean, it 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 sounds like a, it's like a coffin. It's so quiet in this thing. So that's the Fiero. And again, all these cars that I haven't done videos on before, don't worry, I'll do more in-depth videos on them in the future. The old channel had videos and stuff like the Fiero, but if the production quality was really low like it was, I didn't carry those kind of videos over the new channel. So I'll do a video on the Fiero soon. And this right here is my other, like, top pick um, the bullet it's a 2009 bullet mustang i remember i was sitting in an airport in 2007 i saw an issue motor trend i bought it and they were talking about the bullet making a comeback because so they had a bullet edition mustang in 2001 as well and i looked at that car and i said that is exactly what i'd want if i wanted a, a muscle car you know subtle styling classy but still you know it's a muscle car and a uh, sleeper essentially so I knew I wanted one. They were almost forty thousand um, dollars when they came out. Speaking of Mustangs, and um, so I waited a few years. I bought this one in late two thousand ten with eleven thousand miles on it for twenty four thousand. And I gotta say, I've had the car now since late twenty ten. Now it's got thirty nine thousand miles on it. It's given me zero issues. Nothing. Not an oil leak. Not. A, I still have the original brake pads in this car. The original tires. I just changed the original battery out after a decade, pretty much. Um, Giving me no issues at all. It's been a perfect car and it has barely depreciated at all. Um, obviously, it was that initial massive depreciation, especially because the 5.0 Mustang came out, you know, the year that I bought this car. So that really hurt the value of it. But I mean, these are still bringing high teens with this mileage and this condition. And it's dirty. That's something I should have said. All these cars are dirty right now. We've had nothing but non-stop rain down here for a few weeks. You can see there's, there's bird shit and water spots all over it. Because, you know, I still drive them, you know, rain or shine. Better to have a car be driven than to have it sit. So, the Bullet's been an awesome car. Awesome, awesome car. I love it. All right, so my battery died. We had to charge up a little bit. But I think we left off on the Bullet. And now I want to talk about my 65 Beetle. Um, this car... Three, almost four years ago, I had a 2002 Express van. It was a conversion van done by Explorer Van Company, top of the line. And when I moved to Florida, I put it up for sale for trade because I want to bring it down here. Uh, too big to ship, and I couldn't drive it down because I have my U-Haul. So I had a guy offer me this as an even trade, and just the amount of paperwork he had on it totaled up to like $20,000 to build this car between the custom fiberglass body it's on a Arizona chassis uh, 65 Beetle chassis it only had 60,000 miles on it and it has a 76 bus motor that was a so 1600 cc Volkswagen motor that's bored out to 1800 cc it's got all everything is aftermarket in the engine there's not a single part that's original way built up it's got MSP ignition it's got a Holly carburetor you name it so very well done um, buggy build and I said to the guy, I'm like, well, I, cool car, but I'm only looking to do an even trade. He goes, yeah, I'm looking to do an even trade. And I said, shit. So I was down here in Florida, and I knew I had to go out there in a few weeks. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to be up there in a few weeks. Uh, we'll look at each other's cars, see if we can make a trade. And this was around winter time, So something like this up in New England is almost impossible to sell in the winter. And he was an avid skier. He saw my van, thought it'd be perfect for him and his kids. He got my van. I got this even trade. Um, and this thing's been great. I've had it for three years. This is my 74 Honda CT70. I've got two of these bikes. I have it. That's why it's Big Al's bike and auto because it started out with these, you know, 15 years ago. Um, and anyway, this bike, my 72 is still up in New England. I never brought it down here. This one I did because this one, years and years ago, me and some kid put in a 125cc a Chinese engine. Which, this bike's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I parked it last year. I was having some carburetor issues. I haven't got around to sorting it out. So here it sits. The Riviera, my most recent video. So I won't say much about it. Co-part by, 300 bucks. Couple of quirks I sorted out on it. 
low mile Kreedhoff one owner donated both two owner but actually I ran the Carfax on it it was the same family it just had it as a two owner because they changed the dress but you can tell because um, when you look at the records that were in the glove box too the first and second owners you know in the time period according to the Carfax was the same people so it was a one owner car you can tell by the condition that's the story with that if you didn't see the video go check it out 99 328 IS M Sport Coupe. Co part by, paid 375 for it. Um, when I got the car, the charity that, um, this was a donated car as well, and the charity that accepted this car cut the cats off. So I straight piped it back to the muffler. It was cheaper than putting a whole exhaust on it, and it's much quieter now, has a nice sound to it. And the radiator was leaking when I, well, I don't know what was leaking. I had a like cool leak I couldn't really figure out. So I just replaced everything um, from a parts car, uh, radiator, hoses, reservoir, everything. So no more leak, and now it's nice and quiet. That's all this car needed. It's got ice cold AC, four new tires it came with, it's super clean. And um, the M Sport, if you don't know what that is, go check out the video. This is my girlfriend's, and I, I guess it's like our car because um, we, we bought it together as a project actually for my neighbor down there a few houses down he was the original owner and he had parked it for many years in neglect and one day I finally went up and knocked on the door and said I'd like to buy your EG and we bought it for 300 bucks I had 220 something thousand miles or 230 thousand the paint job was effed on it of course it looks like crap right now it's been sitting out here and the birds have been crapping all over it and stuff's falling from the tree but if you go look on my channel, uh, back in December, my girlfriend and I, who's holding the camera, repainted this car, we spray painted it, and um, unfortunately it started to rust right here again. But this is all just dirt and bird crap on the car. Um, it actually came out very well. Our goal with this was a, as minimum as possible restoration, because I didn't want to sink too much money into a $300, 230,000 mile EG. Uh, and I parked it because I bought wheels for it, I didn't like them and one of them had a problem with the rim and I just parked it here. So it still runs and drives fine and we will get that car sorted out soon. That's her other car right there, her S2000. We did a video on this car when I bought it but all the songs I used in it were copyrighted and I tried to edit the video so that I could monetize it. I didn't re-upload it. Um, but we'll do a video on it soon. It's a 2003 S2K. We picked that up back in September we got that car for 7700 with tons of extra parts. We've already made over $1,000 in the extra parts. It was a basically a one owner. The guy bought it with 6,000 miles. And the window is all taped up like a crack house because the window regulator failed and they are very hard to get and we haven't got one in yet. So that's why that's like that. And like I told you guys earlier in the video, um, I also gave her the little cobalt I had. So that's what's here at my house. We also have the newest Copart purchase, which I'm not going to show you in this video because it's at my mechanic shop and I want to make that a surprise video, but you guys are going to love it. Uh, Copart damaged it, unfortunately, um, with their forklift and I have been on a never-ending hunt for the part they damaged. And what else? I guess we're missing my truck. I've got my 2001 F-150. It's a 7700 package. 315,000 miles on it. Still working fine. I just have it parked at my girlfriend's apartment because a little tight on space over here and I don't use it that much anymore. So I just keep it parked at her place. When I need it, it's there. And I have an 89 Tornado Trofeo that I've had for almost as long as these two cars, close to 10 years. Um, that's up in Boston still. I did not bring that down when I moved. I intended to. I prioritized the cars that were working well. I left that up there and it's still in storage. So that car will come down here eventually. I have an 88 Trofeo as well, which is here in Florida. We'll go see that in a minute. And we'll go see my Roadmaster and my other M Sport BMW. We're gonna hop in the Fiero here and we will see you in a few minutes over at the, uh, the parking garage. All right, so we're here at my other headquarters for the cars. The Roadmaster, you haven't seen a video of this. I bought this car last June as a little birthday present to myself. I haven't had to do too much to it. I did a full detail on this car. It's one of the videos you'll find on the channel. And I also just recently did the starter. 
it still needs a fuel pump. It starts up, but it, you know, the pump's getting tired, takes a few cranks. But again, go watch the videos in this car if you're interested. Um, it's in real nice condition. I bought this for 1400 with 110,000 miles. Uh, did the detail, did the starter, and the fuel pressure regulator, because I thought that was the problem with the fuel pump. But uh, otherwise, this car, Nice shape, came with a bunch of new parts that were already installed. The whole AC system was replaced, four new tires, new brakes, you name it. Some knucklehead wrote on here, who are you? <laughs> um, and I wrote a reply, but I decided I'd better just scribble it all out. This car has been sitting here, you can't tell, since January. Um, it needs the crankshaft sensor changed. I'm also familiar with that problem. But I was also having issues with See the compressor was making a funny noise and stuff. I just threw it in here. See the birds have been leaving their feathers on it. Um, it's just a matter of time, you know, and when I keep buying more cars, it's hard to fix the ones I already have. But I'm gonna sort this one out soon. This was a one owner 88 Trofeo. Again, I have the 89 up in Boston. And then we have the TI, which is my other M Sport BMW. Not as pretty as the Silver 328 IS, but Definitely a funky, rare car. I've always liked the TI hatch, so I just kind of chop off the back. Um, this thing runs fantastic. 225,000 miles in this, five-speed manual. Um, it's got the M44 motor, which is slow as sin, but one of the most indestructible BMW engines ever made, and the miles testify to that. It runs like a top. Ice cold air, perfect clutch, good suspension. That's that, so again, missing from the video, the F-150, the 300,000 mile F-150, Cobalt, and my black Trofeo in Boston, and then my Uplander minivan, which I don't think anybody cares about that. So that is the, that's my fleet as of today, which is what, oh, we're forgetting the, the Copart, the newest purchase, which you guys haven't seen yet. You'll see the next week or so, but I don't know how many cars that is, obviously quite a few, um, but that's just my crazy hobby. All these collecting all these weird ass 90s and 80s cars so i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope it clarified what cars are left and what cars you maybe didn't know about and let me know if any of these cars in particular interested you and you want to see more of it and i'll be just sure to do a video about it there's videos on the ti there's videos on the trofeo there's videos on the roadmaster but i've never done like a full in-depth kind of like sob kyle style um review of the car you know so let me know what you guys think and uh thanks for watching thanks for a thousand subscribers and let's get uh, let's keep it going